Dear students, welcome back to VTU E Sectiona program. As we are already seeing, uh, was seeing from the module four of artificial neural networks, the module attractor neural network. So in this video, I am going to continue the topic which is going to be related with the attractor neural network. As we have already come across in the last video, we have come across about the brain state in a box BSB neural networks. Under that we have come across with the operational details of this BSB model and how the BSB model is going to be and signal update equation with the signal update equation we are going to take the two aspects of functions and we have come across with signal sum exchange. And with this help of the signal update equation and some exchange, signal sum exchange, we have entered into a simulation. So we have come across with a MATLAB simulation. We have described about the program and we have seen about the trajectories of this particular simulation. We have come across about the trajectories of this simulation. And we went into the BSB applications, four different applications in that we have come across with a cluster application under radar application. And we have seen a topic called simulated annealing. We have come across with the procedures to simulated annealing, transition probabilities and we have seen suffice, we have, we have seen the stochastic simulated annealing algorithm. So, in continuation with this stochastic simulation annealing algorithm, we have come across some of the critical aspects. So, in this video, we are going to continue with a critical aspects of that stochastic algorithm which is going to be used for the similar simulated annealing. Let me see the critical aspect. A critical aspect of this algorithm is the choice of initial temperature and the annealing schedule. We are going to take the two parameters and initial temperature and annealing schedule. To understand this critical aspects, these two parameters are going to be most important for us, initial temperature and the annealing schedule. A typical choice of this annealing schedule is going to be scheduled as temperature with the critical aspects of the temperature. So, we are going to take the T k plus 1 is equal to C into T k. What is the C? C is the critical aspect where the C value is going to be lying between 0 0.8 and 0 0.9. When we are going to say that where C is going to be greater than 0, less than 1, we are going to have this aspect as T k plus 1 is equal to C into T k. A typical working process or working range of this a critical aspect C is going to be differ from the assumption data which is going to be taken as C is going to be greater than sorry C is going to be greater than 0 or less than 1. So, this is a generic value we are going to get assume and now for that working range we are going to take the value of C should be greater than 0 0.8 and must be less than 0 0.9. The C critical aspect value is going to be assumed in between 0 0.8 and 0 0.9 which is found to be a work well for the real world problems, real time problems. So, that we are going to assume this C value, a typical working range is going to be taken as 0 0.8 and 0 0.9. So, the initial temperature which should be chosen high and the maximum iteration index to be maintained k max as large as possible. So, we are going to take that the k max value should be large value whereas the initial temperature the initial temperature should be always 
lower less value. So, we are going to take the initial temperature should be chosen in such a way as sorry high value so, no, sorry it should be act as a high value and the k value the index value iteration index value should be assumed as as large as possible we are going to assume that one. So, it should be straight forward to write the MATLAB code the MATLAB code segment for the stochastic simulated annealing algorithm which have been specified in the previous table. In the last video we have come across about that one the iterations are going to be made as 2000 iterations as large as possible we have been made over there. Such a way it should be straight forward to write the MATLAB code. So, this critical aspects has to be assumed has to be taken the value for the real world problems as c should be greater than 0 0.8 and less than 0 0.9. Such a way we are going to do that this critical aspect for the annealing process. Next we are going to do about annealing schedule. What is annealing schedule? A critical aspects of this algorithm is the choice of the initial temperature and the annealing schedule as I described now we are going to take this value. Hence, we are going to consider a off field network encoding which is going to be doing a vectors with A 1 and A 2. So, this is going to be called as energy optimization of off field CIM. We are going to discuss about this. Okay. So, with a much intuition into a work of this algorithm is to be gained from the interesting simulation which is going to be this matrix. So, in this example we are going to encode two vectors into a six dimensional off field networks using a bipolar outer product encoding process. So, the vector a 1 is going to be assumed as the value of 1 1 0 0 0 1 a 1 is going to be assumed as 1 1 0 0 0 1 and the value a 2 the vector a 2 is going to be taken a value of 1 0 1 0 1 0. So, the resultant weight matrix which is going to yield a value as like this matrix. So, here we are going to see about that 6 cross 6 matrix is going to be get produced over there as I said. So, we are going to encode this 2 vectors into 6 dimensional off field network cam using this bipolar outer product encoding process. So, with the help of A 1 and A 2 we are going to make this weight matrix as W is equal to a 6 cross 6 2 dimensional 6 cross 6 6 dimensional hot field off field network. Okay. So, the first thing which we do is to calculate the probabilities of the system which is going to being in a different configuration. Okay. So, which is going to be saturate at a point or a particular temperature. So, this is in accordance this is going to be done in accordance with the equation which have been already come across over there the previous equation what we have seen over there t k plus 1 is equal to c t k. So, with this expression we are going to find this value. Okay. So, the configuration is going to be set at a particular temperature this is going to be done with the expression t k plus 1 is equal to c t k. So, that this portrays the configuration wise probability plots at various temperatures. Understand? Such a way it is going to get present over there. We will see about this different portraits which have been given over there the half field net simulation annealing results. So, in this figure the horizontal axis which plots the configuration number from 0 to 63, 0 to 63 okay 60 is going to be here and few more space is going to be present you can see this the space which is going to make 63 okay understand so it has been bifurcate as 0 10 20 30 40 50 60 
then some space is going to occupy both there for 63. For 6 bits, we have 64 combinations, okay. so that it is going to be made into 0 to 63. So, the horizontal axis plots the configuration number from 0 to 63 for the 6 bits of 64 combinations, 0 to 63, 64 combinations. So, we start with 0 and go to 63. Okay. So, energies for each of this configurations are going to be plotted in the figure. So, if you are going to see about that next figure, I will show that how the energies are going to be get configured. Example, this is the energy which have been configured for the bits from 0 to 63. So, totally 64 combinations which have been portrayed over here. Let me see one by one, then we can go for the final uh, energy configuration. Note that the lowest energy corresponds to the encoded association A1 and A2 and their complements of A1 dash and A2 dash. Okay. Here we have to understand about this clearly guys, kindly you can see we are going to take the lower or lowest energy corresponds to the encoded associations of A1, A2 and we are going to consider their complements A1 dash as well as A2 dash. Hence, the energy A1 is equal to energy A2 and that is going to be equal to that of energy A1 dash and energy A2 dash. Okay, such a way we are going to do that one. So, from this figure, if you are going to see about that, I have given four figures are going to be present over there. Okay, figure A, B, C, D. From this figure, the probabilities are going to be get plotted for the temperature 10, 5, 1, 0.1. Okay. So, if you are going to see about that, you can see this temperature which have been plotted over there, T is equal to 10 A. B 1 t is equal to 5 and C t is equal to 1 and D t is equal to 0 0.1. So, the probabilities are going to get plotted for the temperature of t is equal to 10, t is equal to 5, t is equal to 1 and t is equal to 0 0.1. As it is to be expected at higher temperatures, the probability of the system being in a particular state is almost the same for all the states. Understand? So, as we are going to expect that at a higher temperatures, the probabilities of the system being in a particular state is almost the same for all the state. We can come to know about that. This values which have been given over here, almost it is going to be remain same at the point is going to be remain same. However, as the temperature is going to be get reduced, the probability of the system being in a lower range or lower energy state is going to be get increased. If you are going to see about that, the level energy level we are, we are going to monitor this the energy levels are not going to be remain same over here the points probabilities are remain same whereas the energy level is going to be differ from that point to another point the energy levels are going to be increasing okay so lower energy states are increased t is equal to 0 1 energy state is going to be increased t is equal to 1 energy state is going to be bit of increase T is equal to 5, energy state is going to be lowering when compared with T is equal to 1 and T is equal to 10, the energy state is going to be still lowering than the T is equal to 5 energy state. Understand? So, the probabilities are going to be plotted as per the temperature of 10, 5, 1, 0.1 that particular energy levels are going to be get increasing when the T is equal to decrease. The temperature is going to get reduced. The probability of the system being in a lower region is going to be increasing. 
understand. So, this is most important thing that is why I am going to say that the probability estimates for this different configuration which have been shown with 4 different temperatures as t is equal to 10, t is equal to 5, t is equal to 1 and t is equal to 0 0.1 whereas the energy levels when the temperatures are going to get lowering energy levels are increasing understand assume that at t is equal to 0 1 okay at t is equal to 0 1 the probability gets roughly divided between the four energy four lower energy levels the states are going to be get shown over the 1 2 3 4 isn't it while that of other 60 are almost negligible so 1 2 3 and 4 we have been considered and out of 0 to 63 this four states are going to be get having thus and remaining 60 are almost negligible. So, in our case these four states are the two memories that their two spurious complements that were encoded into the weight matrix into the weight matrix see this weight matrix. So, this weight matrix which is going to be if you are going to think about that the spurious things are going to be get present over here. So, the weight matrix consisting of this four values which is going to be present over there understand. So, now this particular uh, information which we have seen over there which is going to create the plots of this particular data. So, this particular figure which shows the energies of each configurations which have been plotted. So, if you are going to see about that the energies which have been plotted over there which is going to be shown over there and the four different energy levels which have been identified at t is equal to 1 is going to be shown over here. So, this is the configuration wise probability plot for the different or various temperatures. Okay. So, various temperatures are going to be identified and it is going to be shown over there. This is a staircase platform of this or a, a staircase plot of this energy level which is going to be present in the simula uh, simulation annealing. Okay. Next we are moving to the simulation result. We perform the annealing as we start with the temperature is equal to 5 and use the particular concentration k is equal to sorry T of k plus 1 is equal to some we are going to assume some of the value over there as already we are aware about that that value will not be useful for us. So, I am going to assume a new value according to our assumption that I am going to take this as going to be 0 0.99 okay. I am going to take this value as 0 0.99 n for t is equal to 5. I am going to assume the value t is equal to 5. We start with the temperature t is equal to 5 and use the contraction of T k plus 1 is equal to 0 0.9 and n. So, what happened? The annealing schedule which is going to be get change for it, is not it? It has to be get change. So, if you can see about this the annealing schedule which is going to be get change over there. So, temperature at 5, I am going to take this T k plus 1 is equal to 0 0.9 and n then the curvature which is going to be get changed the scheduling is going to be annealing schedule is going to be get change over there. So, while if you are going to see about the figure B this is energy transition for the same T is equal to 5 with a value of T k plus 1 is equal to 0 0.9 and n. So, this figure shows the energy transition as the system moves from state to state duration the annealing cycles are going to be a change over there. You can analyze about that. When the changes are going to be happen over there, slowly the annealing is going to be get changed, the transition is going to be get changed and it is going to become 0 at this particular level. Okay. So, notice that at the higher temperature there are many transitions that takes place from lower to higher energy. So, from lower energy transitions are going to be almost 0 almost nil and when it increases the annealing is going to be get increased. 
So, at the higher temperature, there are many transitions that takes place over here. At the higher temperature, it is going to begin doing its process like this. Understand? So, this as we note that as the temperature is going to get lower, the number of transitions to higher energy states become more infrequent. So, here nothing it is going to be there, here nothing is going to be there. So, it is going to be infrequent. This is what a plot of energy transition made by the system during the annealing process. Understand guys? So, as the temperature is going to be at the higher temperature, it is going to be making more transitions when temperature is going to be lower the number of transitions to the higher energy states, higher energy states becomes more infrequent. Understand? I hope that it has been clear for you. Correct? Shall we move on to the next topic? Okay? So, just I am going to give a glimpse about this simulated annealing. As we are aware about that at high temperatures, all configurations are going to be somewhat equally likely and the transitions to energetically unfavorable states are frequent at a high temperature. When move on to the lower temperatures, at the lower temperatures, the transition to energetically unflavor, unfavorable states become less frequent. Understand? So, that the search becomes more like the usual descent procedures are going to be get followed. So, if the cooling is going to be sufficiently slow, the network has a very high probability of finding itself in a optimal configuration that is going to represent the minimum energy configuration. So, this is what a lens simulated annealing it is power to search the power. So, as the temperature is going to be gradually lowered, the system begins to settle into a lower energy state. Okay? As I said, as the temperature is going to be gradually lowered, the system begins to settle into the lower energy states until if finally, settled down into one of the any four attractors which have been the lowest energy which may be taken as minus 20 usually we will uh, we will have about that one as being minus 20 so it's going to be a minus 20 value okay i hope you can understand so this is going to be under minus 20 so as we are aware about that this value may be So, that note that the system might settle into any one of the four minus 20 energy configurations in this case, in this present case. In fact, as uh, uh, predicted by the figure 5, as predicted by this figure 5, nothing but the E, e figure, the system as an equal probability findings itself in one of the lowest energy state. However, which once it settles to cannot be predicted in advance since the search is stochastic. So, our discussion will eventually leads us to the next formulation of a Boltzmann's machine. So, a neural network model that employs a stochastic method in its operation. Let me deal about the next topic is going to be a Boltzmann machine. Boltzmann machine. A Boltzmann machine refers to an association of uniformly associated neural like structure that makes hypothetical decisions about uh, whether to be or on or off. That is the situation is going to be leads. It is a hypothetical decision about whether to be switched on or off. This Boltzmann machine was invented in the year 1985. 
Let me see some glimpse about Boltzmann mission, a learning algorithm. A Boltzmann mission have a fundamental learning algorithm that permits us to find the existing features that represents complex irregularities in a training data. Okay. So, it is going to identify the regularities which is going to be get available in the training data. So, the learning algorithm is usually slow in network with various layers of features or feature detectors, but it is quick in restricted Boltzmann machines that has a single layer of uh, feature detector that is going to be a single layer of feature detector. So, a many hidden layers can be adopted efficiently by compromising the Boltzmann machine utilizing the features activations of one as the training data for the next. So, that is the way it is going to be present over there and adequate efficiently with adequate efficiently the features activations of one which is going to be act as a training data for the next such a way we are going to do that one. Let me discuss in detail about the computational issues of this Boltzmann machine. A Boltzmann machines are utilized to resolve two different computational issues. The first one for a search problem, what is the search problem is going to be present? The weight matrix on the association is going to be fixed and are used to represent a cost function, it is going to be represent a cost function that is the first one. The stochastic dynamics of this Boltzmann mechanism, this machine which permits it to sample the binary state vector that have minimum values of the cost function that is going to be having minimum value of the cost function. Okay. Coming to the next one, second for a learning issue, the first one is going to be a search problem, second is going to be a learning issue. The Boltzmann mechanism or the machine has indicated a set of binary data vectors and this must figure out how to generate these vectors with high probabilities. Understand guys? So, it is a learning issue which is going to have a set of binary data vectors and this samples binary data vectors that have a minimum value and that is going to be find out how to generate this vectors with a high probability. That is going to be the main important second factor for a learning issue. So, to solve this it must discover the weights on the associations so that the relative to other possible binary vectors, the data vector which have a minimum value as I said which have a minimum value of the cost function. So, the data vector must have a minimum value of this cost function. So, for solving a learning issue, Boltzmann machine makes numerous some small updates to the weights, so that each update expects them to tackle a wide range of search issues. So, these are the two solutions for this computational issues. So, to solve the first one it must discover the weights on the association to relate to other possible binary vectors, so that the data vector minimum value of the cost functions are going to be identified. For the next one the learning issue the Boltzmann machine makes numerous small updates to their weights and each update expects them to tackle a wide range of search issues. Such a way we are going to overcome the computational issues of the Boltzmann mission. Moving on to the next one, discrete half fill network, how the Boltzmann machine is going to be present in a discrete half fill network. A discrete of it of uh, sorry, half fill network is an extension to the discrete half fill network in the Boltzmann machine. The Boltzmann machines 
or replace the deterministic local search dynamics of Hoffel networks by a randomized local search dynamics with the help of the randomized local search dynamics which is going to replace the deterministic local search of this of field networks. So, the model is going to be get introduce a powerful stochastic learning algorithm in the place of simple Hebbian rule. Okay. Hebbian rule so that which is going to be employed in the off field network. And relaxation is going to be done in the Boltzmann machine using the simulated annealing procedure as already we have come across in the previous module or previous video about this annealing simulated annealing is not it that is going to be used to relax the Boltzmann machine that is going to be happened over here. Moving on to the next one the architecture Boltzmann machine architecture. The literature of Boltzmann machine which is going to differentiate between a completion network and an input output network. What is a completion network? A very similar to that of up field cam and the input output network is nothing but a similar to that of a standard feed forward neural network architecture which have been come across in the first topic of your module number 4 feedback neural network architecture. Okay. So, these architectures are going to portray in this figure. Note that there are hidden neurons are going to be present over there that do not receive any external point. In addition, the connections are all bidirectional. The connections are all going to be a bidirectional. If you are going to see about that, this is going to be moving over here and as well as this is a bidirectional connections. Understand? And hidden neurons, hidden layer is going to be there, but it is not going to be present over the hidden layer is going to be there, it is not going to be consisting over here. So, the architectural difference from the half field completion network and the standard feed forward network should be carefully observed. If you are going to see about that, the input output layer is going to be shown over here. This is an input layer, the hidden layers are going to be shown over here and here this is an hidden layer whereas here the output layer is going to be present. Here input output layer both are going to be present here itself whereas if this is an input layer, this is an output layer. Okay. Got it? So, it is going to be bidirectional whereas here it is going to be an unidirectional that is going to be present in the completion network and the classification network the difference which has to be get analyzed properly over here. Got it? So, in a completion network architecture as we have seen in this figure a partially unspecified vector is going to be expected to be completed or corrected by clamping or holding fixed the neuron signals to be correspondingly a known value and allowing the remaining unknown value to be determined through a network relaxation process that is based on the simulation annealing that is the process which is going to be get taken over here. On the other hand if you are going to see about that an input output network the inputs are clamped understand the inputs are clamped to a particular value and the outputs are determined through the relaxation process such a way we are going to do that one. This is the difference between completion network and classification network. Understand guys? So, moving on to the next one, we will see the difference what is half fill network and Boltzmann mission, half fill network versus Boltzmann mission. Let us summarize the similarities and differences between the Boltzmann mission and the half fill network. First, let us see about the similarities in both the models. So, similarity if you are going to see about that both the models consisting of a neuron states are going to be bipolar and weights are symmetric as already we are aware about that weights are going to be symmetric as I said W i j is equal to W j i this is symmetric 
and neurons are selected at random for asynchronous update, asynchronous update. As already we have come across over there that the neurons are going to be updated simultaneously. That is going to be asynchronous updates are going to be get present. And there is no self feedback in both the system. There is no self feedback. Is not it or not? These are the similarities between off-field network and Boltzmann network. Let us see the difference between off-field network and Boltzmann mission. So, what are the differences are going to be present over you? The differences are in architecture, the presence of an hidden layer of a neuron makes the Boltzmann machine architecturally different from the off-field network. As we have seen in the figure, the hidden layers of the neurons makes the difference. The architecturally it is going to be different from the Boltzmann machine. That is the first difference. Architecturally both are different. A neuron update in the Hoffel network is going to be deterministic whereas, the Boltzmann machine is going to be stochastic. So, that second thing comes into the particular thing the neuron update. The neuron update in our fields are going to be deterministic whereas, in Boltzmann machine it is a stochastic. And coming to the next one, half field network vectors are encoded into the system using outer product correlation encoding mechanism. And there is no separate learning phase as H in the uh, Boltzmann machine, correct or not? So, Boltzmann machine is having a learning phase, whereas off field network does not have a learning phase. So, in Boltzmann mechanism, learning is going to be implemented through a complex combinations of the simulated annealing and gradient descent that is going to be the very important thing. So, Boltzmann mechanism is going to be based on the process of simulated annealing and gradient descent. In a sense Boltzmann learning is stochastic supervised learning that is most important thing that is going to be the difference actual difference between both the model of field network model and Boltzmann machine model. Understand? Let me see about the operational details of Boltzmann machine. Considering the Boltzmann completion network with a configuration described by uh, energy function E is equal to already we have come across with this expressions in the previous video. Energy E is equal to 1 by 2 summation of i is equal to 1 to n, j is equal to 1 to n, w, i, j, s, i and s, j signal function we have been calculated over there, where we have taken this w, i, j is equal to 0 that we have been taken. So, where neuron in a Boltzmann machine flips their states based on the dynamics which encountered into the context of reinforcement learning, especially for the ith neuron with the signal S i and the activation function is going to be X i. So, we have taken the signal function as S i and activation function as X i. So, from that we are going to identify this function as the Boltzmann function signal function is equal to plus or minus 1 during that time we are going to get the expression as 1 over 1 plus e to the power of plus or minus 2 x i by t. So, this is the expression we are going to get it over there as the dynamics which is going to be present over there when the neurons in the Boltzmann machine flips their states based on the dynamics at the ith neutron with the signal function as S i and the activation function as X i, we are going to get the Boltzmann value as 1 over 1 plus e to the power of minus plus 2 X i by t. Let us see about the operational details of the Boltzmann machine. We employ this kind of update in the MATLAB simulations for the Boltzmann machine. Uh, without uh, the factor of 2 
without the factor of 2 in the exponential. We are going to deal about this without the factor of 2 in exponential. So, alternatively what happened? The equation can be recast, the equation can be recast into the form of a flip probability. For this we have to expand the previous expression what we come across over there, this has to be exp expanded and we have to observe the signal flip probabilities for the neuron. So, that I am going to make this as p of minus 1 tends to 1 and 1 tends to minus 1. So, that the expression is going to be divided into two parts as 1 over 1 plus e to the power of minus 2 x i by t and 1 plus e to the power of plus 2 x by t. So, when minus 1 tends to 1 it becomes minus expression exponential of minus 2 x i by t. When 1 tends to minus 1 the expression becomes 1 plus e to the power of plus 2 x i by t understand. So, we are going to recast this into a form of a flip probability. So, that I expanded the previous expression we got e to the power of minus plus 2 x i by t this terminology ok. This is going to be get expanded into 2 to observe the signal flip probabilities of this neuron i. I am going to take this one. So, that the Boltz con the uh, Boltzmann constant which is going to identify with minus 1 tends to 1 becomes 1 over 1 plus e to the power of minus 2 x i by t. When this 1 tends to minus 1 it becomes 1 over 1 plus e to the power of plus 2 x i by t understand. So, this is the MATLAB simulation for the Boltzmann machine without the factor of 2 in the exponential. Let us see the continuation how it is going to be. As we come across that uh, we can conveniently combine using the neuron signal value before the flip and the energy can change the del E can be changed and the results from this flip which is going to deal about that as P probability is going to be tends to S i is equal to minus S i as 1 tends to minus 1 we are going to make a data over there now as like that the signal function tends to minus of signal function during that time what happen it is going to be 1 over 1 plus e to the power of 2 s i x i by t. Now, this is going to be replaced this term is going to be replaced with the energy del E as already we have described in the previous video previous class. So, we are going to replace that terminology into del E of i by t. So, that the exponential of 2 is going to be get removed. So, that note that the energy change of del E is equal to energy of minus S i then minus of E S i is the difference energy the energy of this configurations with the signal S i when it is going to be flipped the minus that of the energy is the original configuration. So, that we can get that energy So, we can get the energy as del E of i may be dealt as E of minus S i understand minus S i minus of E of S i. So, this is going to be the energy level ok. So, that the difference between the energy of this configuration with the signal S i is going to be flipped as minus that of the energy in the original configuration. With this idea in the place, we are in a position to summarize the basic steps in the Boltzmann machine relaxation procedure. So, 
the Boltzmann distribution is sometimes referred to as a Boltzmann Gibbs distribution. As already mentioned in the a thermal equilibrium configuration which is occurs with a probability that are governed by this distribution. So, it is interesting to note that one can start out with the Boltzmann plus Gibbs distribution and compute the probability that neuron state is plus 1 or minus 1, plus 1 or minus 1 and the result is none another than that of the above equation. The same equation is going to get present over there which is going to be 1 over 1 plus e to the power of del E of i by t. That is the equation which is going to get present over there. Move on to the next partially specified input vector s. We assume that a partially specified input vector s as to be completed by the network and we need to follow the procedure, we need to follow the steps. What are the procedure we have to follow over here? Let me see the procedure one by one. The first procedure clamp the signal value of visible unit to the corresponding known value, clamp the signal value of visible unit to the corresponding known values which is going to be taken as a corresponding known values. So, randomize the signal of neuron corresponding to unknown input values and signal of hidden neurons from the state set which have been taken as minus 1 comma 1. The set is going to be taken as minus 1 comma 1. Okay. So, that we have to initialize the temperature that is the first procedure. Second procedure, select a neuron i at random for the update, select a neuron i at random for update and we need to compute it activations and use the dynamics values, dynamics update equation to compute the signal state that is the most important thing. The second procedure, alternatively flip the signal value in accordance with the probability which is going to be defined by the equation previously what we have seen over there. There we have to note that the signals are clamped neutrons as uh, a neurons uh, will not be allowed to change during the update cycle. Okay. Neurons value should not be get updated during the update cycle that is that has to be understand properly. Come to the third procedure, we need to repeat the above update procedure until all neurons are going to be polled several times, we have to under underline this, okay. neurons must be polled under several times. Later we have to reduce the temperature and we need to repeat the polling cycle repeat the polling cycle, reduce the temperature and repeat the polling cycle. Later we have to stop, when, when we have to stop? Stop when the temperature is going to be low enough, what is the temperature is required over there to be up to that it has to be get repeat, so reduce and we have to repeat the polling cycle then the temperature has to be get enough lower it has been known then we have to stop. This is a procedure we have to follow for this partially specified input vector s. This is the operational details of this particular partially specified input vector. Understand? The moving on to the next operational summary. The procedure can be easily summarized in an algorithm form as which have been given over here. Okay. So, let me see about that, a Boltzmann machine with weights specified in a advance, as already we are aware about we are going to specify the values in advance over there. And we have to initialize, when we are going to initialize? When k is equal to 0, temperature and iteration index, we have to make that, temperature T naught, iteration index k 
it has to be get initialized and we have to identify the temperature limit and we have to check for the contraction contraction is not it a critical value as we have already discussed in the previous class the critical value has to be get analyzed. And we need to clamp the known signal values we need to clamp the known signal values then we have to randomize the remaining signals signal values to the value in a set of minus 1 to 1 that is most important thing we have to take that one understand. So, later we have to go for the iterate we need to do the process select neuron i randomly if not clamped neuron we need to give the signal s i if it is clamped no need to give the signal and we need to compute the x i value we need to compute the p value and we have to check whether it is going to be random or not else it has to set to s i is equal to minus 1 until all the nodes are going to be updated many times later that we have to reduce the temperature how the temperature already we have defined as t k plus 1 is equal to c into t k until that state is going to be get stabilizers we have to reduce the temperature once it is going to be that assume that the t k plus 1 is going to be lesser than that of the t minimum what is the minimum we are going to be get set over there which is going to be get reduced that value at during that time we need to stop the process understand such a way only we are going to do this process. So, with this I am going to wind up this video we will see the continuation in the next video thank you.